I want to turn you this morning to Hebrews 11.6, just one verse. We'll read Hebrews 11.6. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This morning, I want to speak to you about faith, but I want to give you a slightly different perspective on faith. I want to say to you this morning, my dear friends, my brothers and sisters, that faith is a window. Faith is a window. Turn to your neighbor and say, faith is a window. If this window has answered questions, it's no longer faith. I want to say that to you again. Faith is a window with many unanswered questions. Now listen friends, when God comes and He speaks to you, because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, when the Word of God comes to you and says to you, start X Edinburgh, start X Cardiff, start four services on a Sunday, I guarantee you this, there are many unanswered questions. It's so early, who wants to come? Pastor X Church reaches out to young people. Young people can't wake up. Well, I see a lot of young people here. This place is only about 500 seats, you know. 600 if we max it, 700 if we make it uncomfortable. That's very few. Very few. Subang Jaya itself can feel it many times over. Let's believe. But there will be unanswered questions. See, friends, when the questions are all answered, it's no longer faith. When you start seeing 400 people come for 8 a.m. and then you believe, you don't need faith. You need faith when at 8 a.m. there's only five people here. You need faith when you don't have the money. Because when the money issue is answered, there is no longer need for faith. Because the world says seeing is believing when the church says believing is seeing. I don't know, I don't know how ex Cardiff really will be started and when ex Edinburgh will be started and when ex Hamburg will be started. Even the euros is high, 4.2 now. But many Christians live like this. That's why I have to address it. We are faced with questions that we want answered, not knowing that you cannot please God without faith. And so we keep doing things outside of faith. And when we do things outside of faith, when our questions are answered, you know what happens? It's no longer faith and God is no longer pleased. That means you can still carry on doing what He told you to do, but when the window is closed and it's no longer faith, you can still do it and happen, so happen to give birth to Ishmael's instead of Isaac's. Because faith was required to give birth to Isaac. But the question remained and begged to be answered, how can a 90-year-old woman and a 100-year-old man give birth to a child. And because the question can't be answered, let's help God answer it. And if Christians are not careful, if we do things outside of faith, even if God, see God is, not, see God is saying uh, to me, Kenneth X Edinburgh, I say, yes Lord, I don't know, I don't understand how God went. But the window has just opened for me. And this window is an opportunity for me to walk through while there are unanswered questions and while it's still called faith. Because the day will come when all the questions are answered and I have all the pounds in my hand and I have about 20 people willing to start and I have the venue, I have this, I have that, I have everybody saying, the whole of Scotland says, come Kenneth Chin, come with X Church. And everything is fine and dandy. 
In that time, the window is closed. It's no longer faith. I will walk and build ex Edinburgh, but it will no longer please God. Because without faith, God is not pleased. Are you all still with me? So you imagine how many Christians give birth to Ishmael's on a daily basis. Imagine how many Christians want to wait for all the answers, all the questions rather, to be answered before they walk. But it's no longer faith. Are you still with me? When it's faith, the window will be open. It will be filled. I'm saying, friends, filled. Some people actually come up to me, uh, and the very thing they're telling me is the very thing that, you know, they come up and tell me something that sounds bad, but actually is good. For example, they come up and say, Pastor, but you know, uh, my father, you know, won't agree, and my mother won't have the money, and, my, and this, and my boss won't allow, and you know, and, and, and all that, right? And I go, wow, you just told me about 30 minutes worth of the fact that it's faith. If you came up and told me that everything is answered, everything is done, then I would go like, okay, then maybe you shouldn't do it. Maybe now you shouldn't go. Maybe now because everything is answered, uh, you should sit down and ask God whether you should go or not. Anybody still with me? I know, there's, I know there's a little bit of quiet here because some people are going like, either half of you are saying, I, don't, I still don't get you pastors. The other half are saying, I get you and I'm, and I'm feeling a little bit sorry. I'm feeling a little bit sorry that you didn't preach this message earlier, Pastor. You see, that window is open and God gives us a chance to walk through it. Many unanswered questions. And that window will get smaller and smaller. Why will it get smaller? The window will get smaller as you answer the questions. That's done. Window gets smaller. Oh, that's settled. The window gets smaller. Oh, okay, now, now the money is issues. Oh, okay, now, now my wife said can. <laughs> it closes. It closes because all the questions are answered. And faith is no more. And when the Bible says without faith is impossible to please God, it means it. Impossible is the word. So therefore, when we do things without faith, God is not pleased. And we are in danger of giving birth to things that we shouldn't give birth to. I want you to remember there's a scripture in Acts chapter 6 where the apostles said to the people, it's not good that we continue to wait on tables, but we will give our time, our, ourselves to uh, prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the apostle says, choose among yourselves seven men with good reputation, full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. These were men, ladies and gentlemen, who were about to wait on tables. These were administrators. These were school managers. These were teachers. These were support staff, support staff. These were not pioneers. These were not the ones with the vision. These were the, not the ones who are called to lead. These are the ones who are called to serve the tables. Even those of us who are called to serve the tables need to be full of, come on, faith. Full of faith. I'm just a musician. You've got to be full of faith. I'm just the one serving the communion. You've got to be full of faith. I'm just the one, you know, helping with ex-kids as a helper. You've got to be full of faith. Of faith because without faith it's impossible to please God. Amen? The Bible doesn't promise, this, this is an important one, huh? the Bible doesn't promise that God rewards good planning. The scripture we read, in Hebrews 11 verse 6, tells us that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So there is no scripture as far as I can find specifically saying the Lord rewards when you step back and plan and make sure that everything's alright and all the bills are paid and all the questions are answered. Then only you move, I will reward you. I, I don't find a verse like that. I find a verse that says, and I'm going, to, I'm going to repeat it to you again, 
without faith it's impossible to please God, but those who come to God must believe that He is, and He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Why do you diligently seek Him? Because when you and I move by faith, we have to diligently seek Him because the questions are not answered. For those of us who already have all the questions answered, we don't have to seek God. Tell me the truth. When was the last time you really seek God? When you didn't study for your exams. You cried out to God. When was the last time when the bank called you and said, you know, uh, we can't give you that loan. And yet you know, you, 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 know, you know it was God who said, I will give you that house. And the bank won't give you the loan. And you move by faith and the questions are not answered. You and I will diligently seek God. And He's the rewarder of those who do. He's not the rewarder of you planning. Plan for 8 a.m. Everything work out, then only start. The Word of the Lord comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. I believe it. I'm convinced about it. I speak it to the church. I confess it. And over every seat, I confess. We just started in uh, X Singapore, two services. How many people do we have in X Singapore? 50. 50 people, two services. In the eyes of the world, I'm crazy. Well, because in the eyes of the world, I'm a fool. But I'm okay being a fool for Christ. Because I live not by sight, but by faith. Ask Singapore. They said, Pastor, we only have so few people. Just, just keep on to 2.30. I said, my brothers and my sisters, we've been praying for five years for a morning service. And now that God gave us a new building, you're asking me just to keep to 2.30? I said, God has done His part. Where is our part? I believe that only by faith can you please God and I live to please God. You live to please God. That's all that matters this morning, that God is pleased. But so many Christians don't live by faith anymore. We don't give by faith anymore. We give by proper planning. And then people say, yeah, I studied this in university. It's called budgeting. Fine. Budget. But don't let budget be God. Because how if God wants to mess up your budget? Would you allow God to mess up your budget? You, you plan so well and you, know, you, you can only give God 99 ringgit and 99 cents. But He asked for 100 if your budget was God, you will miss that one cent and miss the greatest opportunity of pleasing God. And you say, it's only one cent word. No, it's obedience. And part obedience is disobedience. I don't want to be strong this morning because you are my church, you are my family. I don't even have to shout. I want to share and I want to teach. It's very, very important because if you are living a life as a Christian but you're not living by faith, it's sad and you're being robbed and not only are you being robbed you are robbing God don't get uh, uh, I was saying I was going to say guys and, and, and friends at the same time I was say don't gangs. <laughs> friends and <laughs> family listen to my heart God spoke to me so clearly because sometimes even with me uh, I've been growing in this place of faith, but sometimes I can shrink back because the way forward looks so scary. Sometimes I can shrink back in my giving. And then I start, I don't know why, you know, but it, it, it creeps into us, you know? It creeps into us and then suddenly we find that, hey, how come not as many testimonies? Huh? Because the way you lived before that opened the door to testimonies is not the way you're living now. Now, everything around you is facts, 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 facts. Show me the facts. I'm saying, show me the faith. Yeah, yeah. And we think that facts pleases God. No, facts doesn't please God. Yeah. So Pastor Andy comes up to me and says, Pastor, 120 people are there already in that room. 120 people in Revo Academy. I said, fantastic. He said, Pastor, we've been praying. When should we move out to the sanctuary? Because I told them, couple of weeks before that, hey, I believe that this place will be filled with young people on Saturday. Filled! And the altar calls will be filled with young people. Both teens and campus students. Filled! People just worshipping Jesus. Young people just, 
in love with Christ, on fire for God. Oh, hallelujah. Filling up the altar with, you know, people who want Jesus and, and all that. I, I just, you know, I have this dream. It all starts with a dream. It all starts with a vision. When the Holy Spirit comes, He will give us vision and dreams. And I dream and I, I have a vision. Lives fill. Revel Academy every Saturday. And so Pastor Andy and the team was praying. And then they got a number. They got a number from the Lord, they believe. And it was 120. So they told me, Pastor, they were so excited. Pastor, 120. And I said, oh, great. And then they explained to me, it's, it's a number we believe is from God. And so we've been praying this number. And this number has come. I said, fantastic. So when are you moving to the sanctuary? He said, maybe about three months time. I said, why? You see, Pastor Andy is very, very good at planning. He's very, very good at planning. He's, he's you know, when we ask him for something, for mini zine or whatever it is, or poster or design, he gives us, before everyone else even starts designing theirs, he, he's already, you know, the SPO knows this. Fantastic when it comes to administration. And so he and Jay also, and you know, the rest of the, his team members, very good at planning. So he said three months. Why? Because Pastor Andy's gifting is coming out and his gifting is saying, I will plan and so that when we move in the sanctuary, it will be a big bang. I said, okay. All right, I left it as that because you know, sometimes when I get into wanting to tell one of my guys something, one of my 12 men or one of my 12 women something, sometimes I can take very long. Because I don't just give an answer, I give my heart <laughs> so that you understand where I'm coming from. So I said, okay, Andy, go ahead. They pray. The next Saturday, again, uh, again, tepat, tepat, on the dot, 120 people. Not more, not less. He came to me, Pastor, another Saturday, 120. I had to say something. So I said, Andy, I think God is trying to tell you something. So let me tell you something before God tells you something. I said 15 years ago, maybe 14, 14 years ago, this church started 15 years ago with three people. And the church was growing and it reached about 38, 39, you know, every week, two newcomers, three newcomers, you know. We're very excited because that's very big growth for a small church. When it reached about 39, 40 people, I declared to the Lord, and some of you who are with me for a long time now, you know. I declared to the Lord, Lord, if you can just give me 50, I will move. Alright? Now, because only two newcomers are coming every week, I already mathematically counted in my mind that it would take roughly five more weeks. Therefore, giving me time to plan. Don't you all think like that as well sometimes? You're nodding your head, right? Okay, cool. So I'm not alone. Five more weeks. I, I, in fact, I declared to the rest of my leaders, uh, when we touch 50, we will move. Next Sunday, 50. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, God is not even into 50, you know. He's into 5,000, 50,000, 500. They, this number is nothing to Him. You ask, you confess, you declare, it happens. Because we live by faith, not by sight. So, I am cornered now. I am cornered. I've got, what, easily just two choices, all right? To keep to my word as unto the Lord and go by faith and continue to live to please Him or, ah, uh, you know, maybe it's a coincidence. Uh, uh, maybe a few more weeks, God. Why? Because you feel you need that time and you feel you need to plan and you feel all this, but I'm telling you right now, God didn't promise that He will reward proper planning. Proper planning is good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's great. But it should come after faith. Good planning is good. Please plan. But don't let that be God. Don't let that dictate. Because I tell you what, for one week, uh, I went every day searching for a new venue. Every day, I went around, oh, no, this venue, that venue, where, where are we going to go? Because I have to keep my word. I said, Lord, if you give me 50, I will go. And so what happened was God gave us Holiday Villa. 
You remember that? Yeah. Holiday Villa. We moved into this smaller room that they had for a price that we did not have the budget for. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I tried to live for, by budget these last 25 years. Always fail. Always fail. Seriously. Budget is good, but budget is not God. Budget is good, but it's not God. Just difference by one zero or one, one O. It's good, but not God. I've always seen my budget break. But not because of, 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 of uh, wanton or, 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 or you know, uh, uh, negligent living, or extravagant living. No, because God wants it. So we go to Holiday Villa on our first attempt at the hotel. And of course, the rest is history. Now we are all in the hotels. Holiday Villa. They gave us a price every week. Every week, uh, every Sunday, 500 ringgit discounted. 500 ringgit, one month, 2,000 ringgit. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, we are talking about different numbers today. Yeah. <laughs> but we have to start with 500 ringgit first. Yeah. And 500 ringgit was a lot of money. Yeah. But this is the way God works. I wonder how it would have been if I waited until I was ready, until all the questions were answered, until everybody could show me the money. And then, until everybody could pledge. Okay, I pledged 50 ringgit. Until, you know, I, I, I wonder what could have happened. Leaders, I'm, I'm looking at you for a moment now. I wonder what could have happened. Where would we be today? And I want to make sure this church continues to live by faith. Amen. I want to make sure that you as individuals understand the blessedness of living by faith. Because it's a window. And the window won't be open for long. Why? Because you and I will continue to look for answers to our questions. And with every answer to the question, the window gets smaller. 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 Until we are so comfortable that we can do this, we don't even need God. So I said, Andy, as your pastor, can I tell you something? God is speaking. And you need to be moving. And Andy, without a blink of the eye, said, I understand, Pastor, I'll do it. And he moved, instead of three months, he moved within the month. And today they are here on Saturdays. Are they full yet? No. Are there still unanswered questions? Yes. But that means it's faith. And that means God is pleased. And when God is pleased, He will reward. And He will continue to reward those who diligently seek Him. And why do we diligently seek Him? Because we need Him. Amen. Amen? Time fails me to tell you other stories about other people from this church who has gone out. But I'll give you a brief summary. Once upon a time, it was young working adults who had to take steps of faith to plant ex Cyberjaya, ex Nilai. Because there will be fallouts. And there will be people who say, you know, I'm here just to pray, but after a while, I've got my own plans. It's fine, it's fine. And Jack was left there. And I tell you, those days when you look at Jack, you're not even sure. <laughs> One time, Pastor Jack was walking the streets and the police actually took him aside <laughs> to check for the urine to see whether there's drugs. <laughs> at that time, they look at Pastor Jack, they think he's, a, you know. And, 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 but God can use... Okay, why? Why? Because it's by faith, yeah. not by sight. Yeah. If by sight, a lot of us won't be used. Yeah. Yeah. Ex Cyber Jaya, six, seven, eight people, many unanswered questions. Where will we plan? When will we plan? Who will we plan with? Who is going to be the coordinator? Jack? Yes. Rest is history. Ex Nilai. Young working adult. And so on and so forth. Ampang, Cheras, PJ, Clang. But you know, as this church continues to go by faith and not by sight, you know what's happening? They are getting younger. Campus students are going out. Started with Lazarus going to start in London. Fourth year student, final year student. 
He said to his mother, can you please allow me to finish my fourth year and final year here? Mother said, cannot, you need to go to London. So he finishes his fourth and final year in London, plants X London. But then he gets younger, John. Not fourth year, not third year, not second year, first year. When I went to visit John in Bristol, he said to me, Pastor, all my friends are confirming to me my fears. You know what was his fear? I'm a first year student, nobody will listen to me. And then when he talked to his friends, his friend says, hey, you're a first year student, nobody's going to listen to you. You know, there are enough people in this world to confirm our fears. There are enough people in this world to confirm to you all your negative thoughts. But just find one word from the Lord. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing that one word. And maybe a few who are men and women of faith who will surround you and say, I believe this of God. And even if you don't see, we'll pray until we see something. Like Elijah when he was praying. He asked his servant to go, see, look, look into the sky. And then finally they saw a cloud only as big as a fist. But that fist size cloud became a thunderstorm. You know, uh, Elijah didn't see a whole sky full of clouds before they ran, no? For cover. After he saw the fist, uh, he said, rain is coming. Go, now, run. And sometimes when we see 8 a.m., uh, it might just be a fist of cloud. And then I say, come on, guys, run. Because it's about to pour. When I see 4 p.m. and it's about 80 people, smaller even than 8 a.m., it's okay. It's all right. It's a cloud in the hands of God. I'm about to finish. It's getting younger. It's getting younger. It's getting further. And God is continually glorified and well-pleased because this church continues to believe Him and trust Him. The Bible says again, and I want to repeat it, for without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to please God without faith. But those who come to God must believe that He is. I like the word He is because it fits with the word I am. Who I am. What's your name, God? I am. Though we may be weak, He is our strength. Though we may be poor, He is our prosperity. Though we may be alone, in Him we will never be lonely. Though we may be scared, in Him we have courage. He is. I believe that He is. He is. I believe that He is. I am the great I am. I am your confidence. I am your courage. I am the money you need. I am the, 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 the strength you require. I am the hope in the hopeless situation. I am the good news in the world filled with bad news. I am the light in the midst of your darkness. I am your God, your strong tower, your mighty healer, your great deliverer. He who comes to God must believe that He is. And He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him.